All right, YouTube, we're back. I have to answer a couple of questions. This is from the last video I did with Carl talking about uh, the, the tripod stance um, where if you just take a step forward, wherever you're at, it's like I want, you know, one leg in between my other ones. So I always want, it's almost, I was going to face on somebody's flank and I'm going to have one person's leg in mind to complete that stance. Uh, I'm going to answer your questions and your critiques. Uh, Ernie Rodriguez over on the Wing Chun News group says your legs are way too far apart. You don't have to use hip energy if you know how to use your fingertips as he's pushing against you. Uh, how do you how do you have to do is point your fingertips at him and you'll much more energy instead of using all that mass, which is defeating the purpose of Wing Chun. Guys, have you guys been in a fight? I don't mean to disrespect you, but if you think that with the guys coming in and I call it come in, just give him pressure. And I, are you saying that I just push my fingertips into him and I it's my it's my bougie energy? By the way, and I don't mean to insult, but you guys got to stop shitting on this art and making us all look bad. Comments like this, it looks like crap because it says that if you guys haven't left the security of your own dojo or gym and trained with anybody in a fast, aggressive, dynamic grappling, pulling, pushing, striking pace. No, if you do not know how to use muscle, your Wing Chun is garbage. I'm sorry, but uh, and my legs are too far apart. Well, maybe that's where my balance is. You, again, you guys are, you guys need to explore outside of your gym. I don't mean to be insulting, but I'm going to call you guys out on some of the stuff. Uh, Sifu Bruce C also says, no, no, no. You have to be pigeon toed with your weight on your back foot. Your feet are parallel shoulder width apart with your weight transferring between legs in a given situation. In traditional Wing Chun, this is simply called a switch stance. The 70-30 weight distribution, uh, again, I'm gonna let you push into me a little bit. The concept is, in this controlled environment, you've seen a lot of people, I think it was Chu uh, Song Ting, Tim, if I'm mispronouncing that, he would stand on a scale, you'd have 50 people behind him, and the, the energy would come in, and I'm gonna actually put, put, put uh, Put pressure on the outside of my wrists. Yeah, and just push into me. And the concept is, is he would lift this energy up and in. I push into me, push into me, and the energy would go down into a scale and push down. If you put that on your back leg and go ahead and get energy again, push in. I can put all that weight on my back leg and take all this pressure because it's going right into the ground. Now, as you do that, either uproot me or sink down in as you're pushing in. I don't know, just do it again. When energy is actually not right into you and going down into the ground, like most grapplers are not going to be sitting there going, oh, look, I'm pushing in. They're going to change their level and go into a different stance or different takedown. You guys can't always compensate with that back leg. It's because it's a, not a static movement, right? Fighting is dynamic. You're not going to sit there and take a, a Wing Chun in-class training energy. You go up against, look at the old video with Mike Van Beek where he was doing bong lop drill. He doesn't stay. He changes his level. He moves around. Look at Sifu Singh when he does his stuff. You guys are really going to tell me you're going to adopt a 70-30 split and a stance against a guy like Sifu Singh who moves dynamically, explosively, and actually knows how to move? It's not going to happen. So again, it's, it's not that I'm disrespecting you guys. It's just it's time to take this art a lot more seriously. And we're not, if we're always going back to the traditional, well, this can happen, this can happen, and you have to do this. It says that you don't leave your gym. That's what it says. Lastly, we were talking about this in class today about muscle and why and, and the, the importance of it. Muscle does not activate unless it has resistance. And in the form where we're doing this section with developing elbow energy, right? The Fuxiao section, one of the misleading things, and remember. Most all Wing Chun stuff is done in demonstration context. It's not done in live action. Wing Chun is great for controlled, uh, controlled opposition demonstration. If you were thinking that you're going to develop elbow energy just from this alone, I'm terribly sorry, but you're very mistaken. You'll learn connection from one hip to the next hip. But no matter how hard I push in the air, unless I'm meeting resistance, my muscles will not activate. I can flex all I want but it's not going to activate. When you push into something, now my muscles activate. So in the concept of it, if you're giving me, um, if anything, right, we're in Chisau, 
and you give me a little bit of resistance in, so right, and lift, right? So in this position, I like the flux sow as an example. So flux sow almost has a jump sow energy where my wrist is going into him and my elbow is going into him. If I didn't have resistance, I wouldn't learn how to muscle. And then as he, as he continues in, how to turn this off so my triceps not engaged, my shoulders not engaged, but my butt cheeks are, my core is, go ahead, push in, push in, push in. Oh, there's my elbow energy. Push in, push in. Oh, now if I want to match with that, with muscle, it's there. You have to get resistance and use your muscle to learn how to turn it off to apply. So it's not to disrespect Wing Chun, because this is my art, this is what I teach, but I think that so many people are sticking to this nonsense, not traditional, the traditional teaching is good, but the nonsense of limiting in demo, in demo form. You have to start thinking dynamically. And all that means, no disrespect, is that most of you have never been in a real fight. You haven't boxed, you haven't wrestled, you haven't been in a fight, period. So go test your stuff. Go test your stuff and you'll see that most of you will fall under pressure of resorting back into kickboxing when it comes down to real dynamic pressure. It's not meant to be disrespectful, guys. I'm just calling it like I see it. Hope you enjoy this content and I'll see you guys in the next video.